Scripture reading will be taken from 1 Peter 1 3. 1 Peter 1 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That is the word of the Lord. Good morning, good morning, and good morning. I thought Apple Valley was going to blow away last night, but we survived. We also, is it on Friday? Thursday or Friday, there was an earthquake in the Rancho Cucamonga area, and you know, it's good to have a little earthquake every now and then to <laughs> remind you where you live. Because it's been a while since we've had an earthquake. And I'm not a seismologist. I don't claim to be a seismologist. But I would think that little ones every now and then are better than it building and building and then there's a seven point something as there was in the Pacific Rim in Japan where many lives were lost. It helps us to recognize, or I think it should help us to recognize that God is in control. We are not in control. We like to think that we're in control, but in fact, we are not. There's a song that became famous by Carrie Underwood not too long after she won American Idol, <coughs> Jesus Take the Wheel. And people kind of poo-poo the song, but if you'd really listen to the lyrics, we need to let go sometimes and let God. Today is January 7th, 2024. My wife is not here this morning. She is feeling under the weather. I do have her Bible. Today is our anniversary. She has put up with me this day for 42 years. That's 42 years of marriage. We met at 14, which in today's world is a little odd. But in many of the people that are older than my wife and I, most people met at 14, 15, and they're still married today. I'd like to memorialize this because it is on camera, honey. I'm just letting everybody know that I love you with all of my being. The Bible teaches us in the book of Genesis that uh, a man will leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife and the two shall be one flesh. I'd be amiss if I didn't recognize any visitors that we have with us this morning. You truly are our honored guests. I know it's mentioned in the bulletin. I know that it's mentioned by the person doing the announcements. And again, it's going to be mentioned by me because you truly are our honored guests, and, and we don't take lightly that you took time out of your day to come out to this place to worship God with us. We pray that through our edification that God will be glorified. This is the first Sunday of 2024. Many New Year's resolutions have been made. Mike did a little thing on Wednesday night about New Year's resolutions and the Christians look at them because we shouldn't be making oaths that we have no 
intention of keeping. So if you're making New Year's resolutions, make sure that they are resolutions that you can keep, or at least truly and honestly pursue. Living hope. First Peter chapter 1 and verse number 3. Reggie, thank you for that reading. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope. Again, it's not a dead hope. It is a living hope. At the beginning of a new year, people throughout the world are hoping for things. They're hoping for more money. They're hoping for a better marriage. They're hoping for a better job. They're hoping that the world will begin to come back to God. But do they have that living hope that is only found? in Christ Jesus. A living hope can only be found in Christ Jesus. If you have your Bibles, and again, I pray that you do, if you look at 1 Corinthians 13 and 13, 1 Corinthians 13 and 13, abide faith hope love these three but the greatest of these is love by studying a number of passages especially several in Romans chapter 8 which we're going to be looking at we can understand why hope is such an important subject in Christianity Although the Bible speaks of hope in a general sense, we're going to be concentrating on passages that relate to the hope of eternal life. The hope of eternal life. Let's look at first, not first, let's look at Titus. Titus chapter 1. In verse number two. I'm going to read verses one and two. Paul, a bondservant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledgement of the truth which accords with godliness, in hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised before time began. Staying in that same book, look at chapter 3 and verse number 7. Having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. We are heirs of that hope of eternal life. Only Christians have this hope. Only Christians have this hope. If you are not a Christian, you do not have this hope of eternal life. The hope of eternal life is available to everybody. However, only certain people, the certain people there being Christians, have it. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2. 
Ephesians chapter 2. Verses 11 and 12. Therefore, remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, made in the flesh by hands, that at that time, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Those that are outside of Christ have no hope. That hope is only found in Christ. Thankfully, God has provided a way that man can and must be justified. Let's look at Romans chapter 5. Verses 6 through 10. And since we're here in the book of Romans, let me not forget to remind you that Sunday mornings, 9.30 till 10.15-ish, sometimes 20, <laughs> if Brother Rod is feeling motivated, that he is going through the book of Romans verse by verse, Again, this is an opportunity for you to get a better understanding. If you have any questions that arise, Rod will do his best to answer those questions. And if he can't get to it right away, I promise you he will get back to you with the answer to your question. So I would encourage everybody to take advantage of that teaching. Romans chapter 5 verses 6 through 10. For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And it is through his death, his burial, his resurrection, the shedding of his innocent blood, that we and all of humanity can be justified. The key there is can be. Because just because you can be doesn't mean that everybody will be. Because many will not accept the teachings of the Word of God. Let's go over one chapter to Romans chapter 6, verses 3 through 7. And we're going to read how somebody gets into Christ. <laughs> Because that's where the justification comes from. That's where the protection of his blood comes from. Being in him. Romans chapter 6 beginning in verse number 3. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus 
were baptized into his death. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also may walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. When are we freed from sin? When we die to it. How do we die to it? Do we die to it mentally? Well, we have to repent. We die to it by obeying Christ in being baptized. Somehow, the old man dies in the watery grave of baptism. And when you rise up out of that water, your sins have been washed away. Now, physically, you were just as dirty as you were before you got in there. But spiritually, in God's eyes, you die. Your old man is now dead. And you've been raised a new person in Christ Jesus. Something very special occurs when a person is baptized into Christ. Let's look at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 and verse number 1. There is therefore now no condemnation for who? To those who are in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. If you are not in Christ, you still have condemnation. You can't be near Christ. You can't be somewhere around his vicinity. You must be in Christ. And when you're in Christ, then there is no condemnation. And then as we read in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3, a living hope. We have a living hope. But again, that living hope is only in Christ Jesus. Let's look at an illustration of some of this. Let's look at Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. And I'm going to read verses 6 through 9. Acts chapter 9. Verses 6 through 9. So he... The he there, if you go up further, is Saul, whose name was later changed to Paul. But uh, the he in verse 6 is Saul. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. Then Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no one. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was there three days without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now let's go over, staying in that same chapter, verses 18 through 22. 
I'm going to begin in verse 17. And Ananias went his way and entered the house. And laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. Immediately, I'm sorry, so when he had received food, remember he hadn't eaten for three days, he was strengthened. Then Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. Immediately, he preached the Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. Then all who heard were amazed and said, Is this not he who destroyed those who called on this name in Jerusalem and has come here for that purpose so that he might bring them bound to the chief priests? But Saul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who dwelt in Damascus proving that this Jesus is the Christ. Before Saul became a Christian, his actions indicated that not was he just troubled, but he had evil intentions. His intention was to imprison and to kill Christians. But after becoming a Christian, by being baptized, he was entered into that hope of eternal life. And he immediately started preaching that hope. We look at people in the world, and I don't think we say it consciously, but I think it's sometimes subconsciously that we think there's no way that person's sins could be forgiven. I didn't think my sins could be forgiven. Saul was persecuting the church. He was holding the tunics of people that were stoning Christians to death. And he became the greatest preacher to the Gentiles. He wrote more uh, letters in the New Testament than any other writer. Now he suffered much. He suffered much for Christ. This is my personal opinion. I think part of that suffering was payback for what you were doing to my people because Saul was persecuted over and over and over again but never did he change the gospel message whether he was in prison whether he was being stoned himself whether he was bitten by serpents whether he was it he constantly preached the good news to the lost. So hope plays an important role in keeping Christians saved. Let's look at Romans going back, Romans chapter 8. Beginning in verse 18. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, 
your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. How many prosperity preachers are there out in the world? They believe, they teach that you can purchase your salvation. You cannot purchase it. But Peter said to him, your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You have neither part nor portion in this matter. For your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this your wickedness, and pray, God, if perhaps the thought of your heart might be forgiven you. Only Christians, again, those that have been baptized into Christ, have the hope of eternal life. Caution must be exercised because sufferings can cause a child of God to lose hope and fall away from the Lord. Let's go to the Gospel of Matthew. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. We're going to look at a couple passages in here. Verse 5 and 6. Some fell on the stony places where they did not have much earth. And they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. Think of some of the people you've known in your lifetime that have obeyed the gospel. Where are they? We had several people not too many months ago that obeyed the gospel. We've reached out to them. Where are they? The world will reach in and it'll start giving you problems and you'll start looking other places for answers instead of going to our God. Staying in that same chapter of Matthew 13, look over at verse 20 and 21. But he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet, he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecutions arise because of the word, immediately he stumbles. I'm going to give you again my opinion. The easy part is obeying the gospel. That's the easy part. But once Satan has lost you, now he's going to do everything he can to trip you up, to get you to leave your first love. He's going to put things in your path. And many Christians, sadly, Verse 21, yet he who has no root in himself, but endures for a while, for in tribulation persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. A lot of people that have obeyed the gospel said, I didn't have this many problems before I obeyed the gospel. Maybe I'll give it up. And many of them do, sadly. And then... Satan pulls back a little bit because he's got you to leave your first love. <coughs> Look at 
Let's look at Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 19. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 19. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil. Think of an anchor. What does an anchor do? It holds in place. Boats are often anchored when storms are going, and they're there. We have this hope as our anchor. This anchor, this hope is sure and it's steadfast, it teaches us in verse 19. By maintaining this hope, a child of God can face unpleasant experiences with patience. Again, we are all going through something at one time or another. Some of us are going through several things at once. Life is not easy. Life is not fair. Bad things happen to good people. Good things happen to bad people. Let's go back to the book of Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Verses 24 and 25. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Let's look back at Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5. I would encourage you to read beginning at verse 1, but for the sake of time, verse 3 through verse 5. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. What? That can't be right. Glory in tribulations? Shouldn't we be glory, glorifying when we're not in tribulations? No. We can glory in tribulations. Why? Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. And perseverance, character, and Character, hope. Hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. When we come through these trials and tribulations, it helps to build our character. And the building of our character produces hope. Christians are assured that present sufferings are not worthy to be compared to future glory. Staying in Romans chapter 8 and verse 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy 
to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. I can only think of heaven with my finite mind. I can't imagine it anywhere close to its true glory. Being in the presence of our God. Being in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Being in the presence of the Christ. These bodies in uh, Corinthians, the 15th chapter, are going to be raised a new body. A body that will allow us to be in the presence of our God. That's beyond my comprehension. But oh, I have a hope that I will be there on that day. Christians are assured that God works providentially on behalf of his children. Romans 8, 28. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Christians are assured that God loves his children. Romans chapter 8 and verse number 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Drop down with me to verse 38 and 39. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. If you are in Christ, no created thing can separate you from that which you have been baptized into. Through Christ, God's children can be more than conquerors. Staying in Romans chapter 8, look at verse number 37. Yet in all these things, what things? Those things that we just read. We, that's his children. That's those that have been baptized into Christ. That's who the we are. Are more than conquerors. Through him, through who? Through Jesus Christ, who loved us. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son into this world to save sinners. If you have not yet obeyed the gospel, now is the acceptable time of salvation. We're not guaranteed milliseconds from now, let alone hours or days or weeks. We have no idea what's going to happen to us in the future. But we know that if we obey the gospel, we know that if we are in Christ, that none of those things can separate us. If there's anyone here who has not yet obeyed the gospel, we would invite you to come forward as we stand and sing. Hear the sweet voice of Jesus say, Come to do 